so last class we discussed about typical organization of computer so there we have learned the different units of computers that is input unit then cpu central processing unit then we discussed the different components of cpu there we discussed control unit arithmetical logical unit and registers then we discussed about the storage or memory unit then we discussed the output unit so this is what we have understood last class so this class as i told the definition of computer this electrical and electronic component put together to perform the operation required by the user so now let us learn these electronic components what are the different types of electronic components how these components are interconnected you might have seen we have a keyboard we have a mouse we have a monitor so when you press something from the keyboard the same thing can also be seen on the monitor how this is possible definitely there is a physical connection how this connection is established not only monitor you take any peripheral device modem or it's a printer or it's a mouse any devices they has to interlink with each other so where is this interlink exist how all the components are connected so this is connected through the the main circuit board we call it as a printed circuit board that's a large largest circuit in a computer system so where all electrical and electronic components are connected together maybe a processor maybe disk drives controllers chips all this are mounted on it so indirectly all the components of the com computer has to communicate through the motherboard so what is motherboard means motherboard is a main circuit board which allows you to connect all the components of computer either directly plugging into one of the socket or slots or connected through the port so this indirectly a uh, provides communication highway where all the components of computer can communicate with each, with each other so we have seen main memory we have a processor and we have a drives we have a hard disk so all these components are connected through this the main circuit board that is what we called as a motherboard so motherboards are characterized by the following factors the first one what we called as a form factor the second one is called processor socket and one more is chipset let us learn this one by one so first one form factor the form factor of motherboard refers to the geometry the geometry of motherboard its dimensions and electrical and other requirements so how there there are standards has been developed so how the motherboard can be designed so what should be the shape of motherboard and how it looks like sometimes it's a rectangle sometimes it's a square or sometimes it's a oval depending on the requirement that's what geometry so there is a different standards has been developed so these standards are used by different manufacturers to develop the different motherboards the most commonly developing motherboard is atx advanced technology extended so this is one of the leading motherboard producing so next we have a chipset so chipset is the is mainly control and coordinate the various component on the motherboard so chipset chipset is integrated on the motherboard so when you purchase motherboard make sure you have a latest version of chipset in that motherboard so this is an accessory because it supports for 
the upgradability of the system in the future. So that's why we have to buy a motherboard which has a recent chipset. The function of chipset is to control and coordinate. There are many components are connected together. So chipset, it maintains the resources of computers, all the components. Resource means all the components of computer as to interconnected. So there is something electrical circuit has to be monitored or it should be controlled. That is what done by chipset. So all motherboard are integrated by the chipsets, each motherboard. So that is why whenever you buy motherboard, buy the latest chipset in the motherboard. So that helps in the upgrade of the system. The next one is called processor socket or processor slot. What is a processor socket means? So it's a rectangular pin. So where the processor can be mounted vertically or it's a, we have a number of pins, connecting pins or connectors on which it is mounted. So depending on what type of socket the motherboard having, there we have a different, that is how motherboard are classified. So let us discuss about different types of motherboards available. So first we had XT motherboard, then we have AT motherboard, then we have baby AT motherboard and then we had ATX motherboard. So AT motherboard means extended technology motherboard. This was the motherboard used in the early computers. So oldest processor using this type of motherboard. So normally the processor socket will be, so low insertion force socket, what we call LIF, low insertion force socket. That's where we keep the motherboards. And also for RAM slot, the slot is opening where we keep the main memory, the RAM. So that will be, that is dual inline memory module. So, and also it has no port and it supports only expansion card as ISA, that's a industrial standard architecture. So this was XT motherboard, extended technology motherboard. So whenever we classify motherboard, first we have to look at the socket, what type of socket the motherboard is having. Like I took now example, XT uses low insertion force socket and look at the expansion card. What is available there is what we have only ISA, industrial standard architecture. And this do not have any port. They do not support for the ports. And one more, it has 12 pin power cable. So this is the motherboard which was existed earlier, XT motherboard we call it. So then they are used in the Pentium 1, Pentium 2 processor or Pentium MMX, Multimedia Extended Technologies that was used earlier. So next is we have AT, Advanced Technology. So your Advanced Technology, so it uses for the processor, the socket will be pin grid array. So it's a pin grid array sockets and it has a, for a RAM slot, RAM slot we have SD-RAM, synchronous dynamic RAM slot and then it has a PCI slot, peripheral component in interconnect expansion slot and it has a 20 pin power cable and this are used in Pentium 3, Pentium 4 processor, Pentium 2, Pentium 3. So this is earlier, this also just it's a modified versions where we had a low, low insertion for socket. Now we have a multi pin, That's a, we have a pin grid array. So we have a number of pins arranged in the form of grid. So where the processor is placing and it support for instead of ISA, industrial standard architecture, it also supports for PCA, peripheral component interconnect. And also it has got port and we have expansion and also it has a 20 pin power cables. This is used in Pentium 3, Pentium 4 processor. And next what we have is advanced AT, we have baby AT, that is advanced baby, advanced technology. It combines both XT and AT. So XT and AT will be whatever we had a socket and it supports for both. One LIF, low insertion force socket, another is we have pin grid array, it supports both for expansion slot, that is what we call uh, ISA, industrial standard architecture and also it supports for PCI, peripheral 
component interconnect. And one more, it supports for both ports and also it has a 12 pin and 20 pin power cable. And next, what we have um, other type of motherboard is called ATX, Advanced Technology Extended. This is the most common or the latest motherboards available. So it supports for MPGA, so multi-pin grid array, MPGA, so that's a multi-pin grid array. And also it supports for DD RAM slot, that is double data RAM slots. And also expansion slot, we have a AGP, AGP ex expansion slot, accelerated graphic board that we'll be discussing. And this, all, this is, and also we have a 24 pin or 24 pin power cable. So this is the latest motherboard available. So whenever you purchase or you're trying to assemble the computer means, right now the available motherboard in the market is with the latest chipset is what we call ATX, Advanced Technology Extended. That's presently available. Let us learn more about motherboards. So now, so already I have told the motherboard is a main circuit board where all the components of computer has to communicate with each other, either directly plugging or connected through the port. So now as all the components are connected, there are some high speed devices, there are some slow devices, electronic component. Devices here, all electronic component. So there is a necessity of controlling the speed or data movement between the various components. Here data refers to electrical signals, how these electrical signals move from one component to another component. So fast moving and slow moving signals, they may create a traffic or there may be a possibility of collision of electrical signals. That is a data loss may occur. So therefore, the motherboard is divided or splitted into two sections or two part. One is called a north bridge, another is called south bridge. So what is north bridge means? In north bridge, all fast moving or fast devices are interconnected like CPU processor and we have a RAM, main memory and video cards. So all these components are connected in north bridge and all slow moving devices or components are connected like hard disk, sound card, network card, modem card. So all this will be south bridge, serial parallel ports, all are connected and the keyboard, mouse are connected. But between the CPU and the main memory, because the CPU is faster device, faster calculating processor, and to cope up with the speed of the memory, we have a, we have a main memory, RAM, which is a fast memory, expensive. So to utilize this, the we, we keep the CPU and the RAM in the north bridge so that exploiting the speed of CPU with respect to the motherboard. So if you mix somewhere, there's a possibility of or making the processor to work slowly because RAM is somewhere and then data has to be accessed. There's a possibility of slow movement of data. So that is the reason the motherboard is split into two parts. That's one of the reason. So that's as a result what happens. One, data loss can be controlled. Unnecessary data traffic could also be con controlled and the, we can exploit the speed of CPU and the RAM. So that is the motherboard where we have a north section or north bridge we call, another is called south bridge. The main purpose, the movement of data should be smooth and continuous and there should not be any loss of data because of high speed and low speed components on the motherboard. That's why we split into north bridge and south bridge. So next we have a components of motherboard. So what are the components of motherboard means? I think all the whatever we seen in the computers, what we discussed in the computers, all will be the components of motherboard. Let us discuss one by one. The first is the processor, which is very important. We have a processor on the motherboard and we have a what we call BIOS, we'll discuss how what is basic input output system. And we have a CMOS, we learn all these additional things, which we may not familiar right now. Complementary metal oxide semiconductor battery. And then we have a slots where we place memory. And also we have a disk controllers and we have a port or interfaces and we have a bus. So we learn all these components one by one in detail. 